Almighty God, we acknowledge our dependence upon thee, and we beg thy blessings upon us, our parents, our teachers, and our country. From the studios of the Ram Cave, in the home of the Camellias, I'm Joe Terosian, and this is the Burbank Faith Virtual Good Morning for October the 28th, 2024. We are always praying for our young people, and this is episode number 329 of a ministry without parole. And uh, today we're going to be in James chapter 4, verses 6 through 7. Now, I am late, but three times. This is my third time trying to get on, and I could not get on, and I kept getting bounced. But here I am, and it looks like we're 30 seconds in, so I think we're good to go. So, nice overcast morning. Feels more like fall. Hopefully it feels more like fall as the days and weeks go on. All right, James chapter 4, verses 6 through 7. Let me blast through this and get you guys out of here. And this is uh, James, Jesus' brother, sharing this. But he gives us more grace. That is why Christ, the scripture says, God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Submit yourselves then to God and resist the devil, and he will flee from you. The scripture quoted from the OT is Proverbs 334. That's God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. It's pretty simple. God gives us more grace. No matter how often we fall short, he gives us more grace. Now, let's not confuse this with live like the devil on Saturday night and a saint on Sunday morning. Let's not mock God. This scripture attached to the previous passage acknowledges there are going to be difficult times for all of us, times where we fall short. Hard to believe myself included, right? It will happen. We will all do things out of um, selfish motivation. I will sin. You will sin. Uh, but guess what? He gives us more grace. Let's not be proud. Let's not look for a villain to put our poor choices on. Let's be humble before the Lord. Um, let's not, um, how do we say this? Let's see. To try to gain a foot up on our walk, let's submit to God and resist the devil and then he will flee. We will manage this perfectly, uh, except we won't manage this perfectly, right? We think we're going to manage it perfectly, but we won't. But the Lord knows our hearts and recognizes our frailties, and he gives us more grace, even in our arrogance when we think we're going to handle it more perfectly, if that's a phrase that should be used. And let me finish with this. He gives others this same grace, especially as we head into next week, right? What we've been talking about since the turn of the calendar year, a week from today is, uh, well, eight days is the election, right? And he gives this same grace to others, those that offend him and those that offend us. Considering my audience, I'll remind that those practicing the worst sort of depravity uh, and are publicly endorsed and celebrated, yeah, those folks, <laughs> he gives them more grace too. Perhaps we should as well, in the form of a broken heart, but not an affirmation of their sin. You follow me on this? We can love a person through all this, but we don't have to affirm their sin. Ultimately, the Lord will not be mocked. This is what we want instilled in our young people, along with the grit, the confidence that when they come up short, they know that he gives us more grace. We want them embracing this when they come face to face with the spiritual hostility of this world and it tries to convince them that God couldn't love them. We want them to know that he gives us and them more grace. The ability in the face of failure to come home because he gives us more grace. To choose to remain in a believing loyalty in Jesus Christ even when we fail sometimes. Even when we feel like a monumental failure because he gives us more grace. Knowing this, knowing that they standing alone with Jesus, no one else has to stand with us or with them, that they standing alone with Jesus will always be victorious. And that's why we pray for our young people. But how do we achieve this? How do we keep remembering that he gives us more grace? Well, daily we say, Almighty God, we acknowledge our dependence upon thee and we beg thy blessings upon us, our parents, our teachers, and our country. I can't think of a better way to start any prayer than Almighty God, we acknowledge our dependence upon thee. Amen? Amen. Okay, we're going to add a couple people uh, to our list here. Uh, a woman named Patty Starks. She is a uh, sister to Sherry Waite. Uh, Sherry and Patty are sisters. 
uh, to, to we're, we're sisters to Diane and Leone. They still are. Diane has gone on to be with the Lord. Patty's health is not good. So if you keep Patty Starks in prayer, that would be marvelous. Also, continue to pray for Bill Alajaji. He's getting better. Uh, Tony Ellis, who has uh, lung cancer. Syl Stoker, who has breast cancer. Colby Van Dyke, throat cancer. It's very sees at a critical stage. Joey Schultz, uh, part of our church. Uh, he is in Tennessee right now, tending to his mom, Patty, who had a heart attack. Be in prayer for her and for Joey's dad. His name happens to be Joe. Um, Kim Dedini. George Eastus. I spoke to him for about 25 minutes on Saturday. He's still in rehab. Uh, he has his good days and his bad, but his spirits are up. He's battling because he's trusting in the Lord. So continue to pray for George Eastus. Uh, Rafi, our neighborhood boy the great Tim Burns, and of course, Alex, the two-year-old with leg cancer. Let's continue to keep them in prayer. Um, I'm swimming right now because I think I might have forgot somebody. But folks, you let me know. And if you have any others, please pass them on to me uh, and we'll go from there. All right, let's pray and we'll get you folks out and on your way. Lord, we do acknowledge our dependence upon you, our dependence upon you for our lives for the lives of those we love. And we think of our young people, God, and we're depending on you, Lord. We turn to you. Um, we can vote a certain way. We can speak up. But, Lord, it's you we lean on. And in regards to our kids as they hit the campuses today, Lord, from pre-K all the way up to graduate school, Lord, we ask that you go ahead of them on this spiritual battlefield, this Omaha Beach, where um, it is so dangerous for them. Lord, we pray that you silence the voices, bring shame to those who parrot the evil from the from the other realm, Lord, that would deceive our young people and build in our young people a spirit of discernment to spot the fraudulence of this world, to recognize the joy and the eternal that is found in you. Lord, let those who have positions of authority, positions of influence, Lord, always have the courage to, to lean towards you, to choose you publicly for the world to see. Uh, Lord, let us not just say, God bless us, let us let us um, let us mention you by name. Let us let us uh, pray for you. Uh, let us pray pray to you. Let us uh, lean on you. Depend wholly on you for our young people, for our families, for our future, for our country, especially in these days and weeks to come. Lord, we thank you again for all the good things you have given us, Lord. And we lift up our brothers and sisters: Patty Starks, Bill Alajaji, Tony Ellis, Sil Stoker, Colby Van Dyke, Joey Schultz, Kim Dedini, George Eastus. Rafi, Tim Burns, and Alex. Lord, we ask for all of them and your blessings to be upon them. Give us a great day. Give us a victorious day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, cool. I think we did it. God bless, guys. Look at this. We did it in eight minutes. Eight minutes. Goodness gracious. I hope I didn't go too fast. You let me know if I went too fast. All right. God bless, guys. We'll talk to you soon.